let's talk about adaptive immunity. So um, on a good day, your innate immunity, the one that you're born with, is going to be able to deal with minor infection. Right? Um, you're going to get better very quickly. Uh, there is no need to involve adaptive immunity. However, uh, in cases where you come down with something that's really difficult to deal with, uh, uh, like again, um, chicken pox, uh, uh, hepatitis, flu, uh, coal, right? all these things, um, the innate immunity is not very good with dealing with it. And that's when you need to bring out the, um, the, the big guns, the adaptive uh, immunity. Okay? So uh, adaptive immunity is uh, going to um, create long-lasting mechanisms uh, that are going to be uh, tailored uh, f to target a specific uh, 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 invading uh, pathogen. And um, typically speaking, um, once you have uh, created the adaptive immunity for that pathogen, um, you are going to be protected against it uh, for life. And we're going to look at how that is possible. First, uh, let's talk about some characteristics of uh, adaptive immunity. Right? Uh, number one is um, there needs to be a way to distinguish uh, self uh, and non-self. Right? You want to know what to attack. Right? You don't want to uh, indiscriminately attack everything. Right? You want to know uh, who's the enemy. So this uh, is an, uh, um, uh, a characteristics of adaptive immunity. Um, another one is uh, is memory. Okay, you have the ability to remember uh, a specific foreign antigen right, on the pathogen, uh, and so uh, next time if you encounter it again, uh, you are going to be able to deal with it uh, uh, much much quicker. Um, at this point, maybe I should clarify, um, you know, the difference between uh, pathogen uh, and antigen. Right. Um, some people might find that confusing. So pathogens are basically um, uh, uh, living things that cause you to become sick, right? Um, so bacteria, right? Bacteria is a pathogen. Uh, virus, although virus, some people don't consider them as living, but it's an example of pathogens. Uh, a fungus, right? Uh, parasites, so all these things are pathogens. They can cause you to become sick, right? Uh, and, you know, they, they are... For the, for the most part, alive, right? Um, and antigens, antigens are not necessarily bad, right? Antigens are just uh, uh, molecules that are found on the surface of a cell. So you remember your, your, your cells have antigens, right? In fact, your red cells have antigens that determines your blood type. So it's, it's not a bad thing. It's just something that we all have, right? All cells have it. So bacteria, virus, and fungus, they also have antigens. Um, and so what we're talking about here is if your body, if your immune system sees a foreign antigen, something that your body does not have, then it's going to react against it, right? You're going to create immunity. You're going to create antibodies to attack that foreign antigen. So let's say we have a bacteria here, and there is an antigen uh, uh, X here on the uh, on the on the bacteria. Okay, and we don't have antigen X in the body. So when your immune cell sees this one, they are going to uh, uh, create an antibody um, to to attack this foreign antigen, which is found on the bacteria, right? Uh, and so next time when you come down with the same thing you will remember that you fought off this foreign antigen before uh, and so you're going to be able to uh, respond to it much much quicker another characteristics of adaptive immunity uh, is uh, specificity and also diversity so specificity i'm just going to read this to you first uh, is um, uh, the ability to respond uh, combat specific to respond and to combat uh, specific antigens, whereas a diversity means potentially you can respond to billions of different uh, antigen receptors. So it's a little bit confusing here, um, but you can think of having a whole set of uh, screwdrivers, okay? So uh, um, the screwdrivers, the tip are different for each screwdrivers, uh, but then the handles are pretty much the same thing. So each individual uh, screwdriver is designed to deal, uh, to tighten a particular type of uh, screws, okay? So like if you have a flat screws or something, then you will need the one with the flat head, right? If you have uh, one with a, with a cross or something, I don't know what they're actually called, then you will need the one with the, with the cross. So each um, uh, 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 screwdriver is only good for one type of screws, okay? But if you have the whole set, then you can basically tighten any screws uh, in existence, right? So that's kind of like that. Individual antibodies 
are, are, are very specific. Okay, each time your adaptive immunity is going to um, uh, create a tailor response for one type of pathogens. Okay, uh, and that 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 will only work for um, that specific uh, infection. But uh, collectively, your adaptive immunity can create many, many billions and billions of different types of response um, that would be useful for, you know, potentially billions and billions of different types of pathogens. So central to adaptive immunity uh, is the ability to generate antibodies. Antibodies is like the final ultimate weapon we have um, to defend the body. If the antibodies does not work, then you're not going to get better. Okay, and That's when you need to have the medication to help you. Right. So um, the basic unit of, uh, of an antibody is basically a Y-shaped protein. And I mean, we learned about this when we discussed uh, uh, blood transfusion. Right. So. Uh, this Y-shaped protein has um, has two parts. Okay, um, the trunk of the antibodies uh, we call that the constant region. Okay, they are pretty much the same for all antibodies. You can think of that as like the handle of a, of a screwdriver. Um, and then you have the arms. The arms is what we call um, what we call the um, variable regions. Okay, and that would be like the tip of the screwdriver. And each of the uh, antibody will have a different uh, variable region designed to bind to a specific antigen. There is a key and lock relationship between the variable regions uh, and the uh, and the antigen that it's designed to bind to. Okay, so over here we have little little pentagon groove, and that would only fit for the pentagon uh, antigens here. And here we have little semicircles, knobs, and that would only work for the semicircle antigens for the bacteria. So each antibody is specific to its um, a target. So that's the specificity uh, characteristics that we were talking about. However, you can make many, many, many different types of antibodies. You can make billions, uh, potentially billions of different types of antibodies for all the different types of infection that you are going to experience in your life. And that ability to create all these different types of antibodies um, is the characteristics uh, we call diversity. Okay, so that's, um, that's what antibodies are. Let's take a look at some of the ways that antibodies work to uh, help with uh, clearing the infection. Um, antibody reacts with viruses and toxins. Um, toxins are basically poisons made by bacteria. Um, sometimes uh, it's not the bacteria themselves that cause you to become sick, but uh, it's the toxins that they produce that makes you sick. So for example, in, uh, in, uh, in botulism, uh, 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 you can cook your food 100%, uh, but the heat will not destroy the toxin. And if you consume the food, um, you will still get food poisoning, right? So antibody works by uh, 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 coating um, these viruses or toxins, and uh, it will cause them to become neutralized. So this is called neutralization. Um, so here you can see some toxic uh, molecules produced by the bacteria and uh, if you expose your cells to it then it's going to damage the cell and potentially destroy them okay making you sick but uh, in the presence of antibodies the antibodies will bind to the toxin uh, and neutralize them so they are not going to be able to attach to your cells so that's a good thing uh, here we have some red cells and we have some uh, uh, antibodies and some virus uh, and um, the antibodies will uh, attach to the uh, um, uh, virus antigens, uh, and they will no longer be able to uh, attach to your um, to your red cells, right? So um, they neutralize virus, they neutralize toxin. Uh, here's another one: uh, antibodies can bind to the target and form an immune complex. We know this already from our discussion on. Um, on uh, cross reaction. Remember, if you have a if you have a, a, a cell with antigen A and you mix it with an anti A antibody, what happens is the antibody will bind to the cell and causes clumping, right? Agglutination. So this is the exact same concept, uh, except instead of having a red cell, you're going to have a bacteria. And let's say the bacteria has antigen X on it, then your antibody will be anti X and it will bind to the target and cause them to clump together. So this big, huge clump that you get uh, after the antibody binds to its target, that is what we call an immune complex, okay? So these big, huge immune, immune complexes uh, will 
be um, engulfed by by phagocytes. Okay, so here you have macrophage, and it's eating up all these uh, immune complex, right? So it's basically just put them all together in a big chunk, uh, so it's easier to see, and you can eat more at the same time. Um, next one, cells can uh, be coated with antibodies, uh, and that will actually uh, activate complements uh, and encourage them to form membrane attack complexes or enhance phagocytosis. So I don't want you to think of innate immunity and adaptive immunity as two uh, separate and related uh, branches um, of, of defense. Um, and, and in fact, based on this slide, you can see that the two kind of uh, crosstalk, right? The, the two kind of uh, uh, feedback on each other to, uh, to enhance the, the immune response, right? Um, antibodies are supposed to be the um, uh, adaptive immunity but uh, once you form the antibody, it could feed back to the uh, uh, innate immunity and cause you to uh, make more uh, membrane attack complexes, and then it will also enhance phagocytosis. So it's more like a network uh, 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 of response rather than a linear series of, of events. So those are the three ways that antibodies uh, 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 can help uh, with the infection. Um, here is another um, important concept. Uh, antibodies are proteins and sometimes they are um, uh, uh, much smaller than the antigens that they recognize. So um, not all antibodies are created equally. In fact, the uh, antibodies that you create are based on shuffling your genes. Okay, It's kind of like uh, shuffling a deck of cards and then dealing out you know, six cards, and you're gonna get different cards every time, right? Uh, sometimes, you know, you might get the same set of cards, but there are so many different combinations, right? So uh, the different combinations uh, that you get by shuffling your genes will actually uh, cause the uh, shape of the uh, um, uh, variable regions to be different, and hence the ability to recognize uh, different uh, uh, targets. And so, not all antibodies are going to have the same. Uh, uh, efficacy uh, when it comes to binding to their targets. So some will be stronger, it will bind to targets with two arms and some will be a little bit weaker. Um, so it turns out um, the antibodies that are, are, are going to be most effective are the ones that binds to the target with higher affinity, right? So the specific location on the antigens um, that the antibody binds to is what we call an epitope epitope okay so um, when we create a vaccine for example we want to use an epitope um, that is very immunogenic okay that will uh, create antibodies um, that have strong strong binding so now that we know how antibody works let's uh, talk about how antibodies are made and we're gonna do that in a class note so let's say we are infected with some uh, red bacteria okay so these are these are red bacteria right here, uh, and uh, and we are uh, being infected with them. So what happens is um, your innate immunity is going to kick in and try to get rid of them. Um, so you're going to have your inflammatory response, you're going to have uh, your complements, and you're going to have your phagocytes. So here I'm going to draw a phagocytes, okay? And I'm going to use macrophage as an example. So here is my macrophage. And again, I encourage you to draw this uh, together with me. It's going to help you understand uh, things a little bit better. So we all know that macrophage is an example of phagocytes. So it's going to do phagocytosis, phagocytosis. Uh, and it's going to basically eat the red bacteria. It's going to eat it. It's going to put it in a vesicle. Okay. Uh, so that's what we know so far. What I did not tell you previously is that the macrophage can actually do something called antigen, antigen processing. Okay, antigen processing. So in antigen processing, what happens is that the macrophage will take uh, part of the bacteria that it that it has uh, engulfed. It will break it down, and then it will put the bacterial antigen on its surface. Okay, the macrophage is really proud of what it has done. It's very happy that it ate the bacteria and it wants to show everybody. Okay, so it will show everybody by putting the uh, bacterial antigens on its surface. So these red circles are bacterial, bacterial antigen. Okay, so this 
uh, process is called antigen processing. Right. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, uh, skip to skip to another thing for now. Okay, we're gonna come back to this in a second. Uh, from your bone marrow. Okay, from your bone marrow. This is your bone marrow. Uh, it's gonna be in the middle, I guess. So your bone marrow. Uh, that's where all your uh, white cells are produced. So uh, from it, we are gonna have uh, something called naive, naive T cells. Okay. So naive T cells are basically uh, uh, T cells that are not uh, exposed to foreign antigens yet. Okay, they're naive. They don't know, you know, they don't know anything. Okay, they don't know the evils of the world, so to speak. Okay, that's why they're called naive T cells. Uh, and you're gonna have different types of naive T cells. Okay, you're gonna have a naive T cells with uh, with a blue receptor. Maybe you're gonna have a have a naive T cells with uh, red receptors and all these receptors are going to be created um, by uh, gene shuffling okay so it's all random you might have one with yellow receptor you might have one with you know uh, green receptors and so you, you get the idea right so each of these naive T cells will have a unique unique um, unique uh, receptor and again you get this receptor by shuffling your genes okay by uh, splicing different introns uh, in and out and connecting different exons together and you will be able to get a unique receptor okay so now uh, back to our macrophage the macrophage has just engulfed a bacteria it's very happy about it it puts it onto the surface and now is going to show these naive T cells okay it's going to try to find a naive T cells that has the um, receptors um, to recognize the same bacteria okay so um, this uh, 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 macrophage is going to come and, and show it to this cell. So are you going to be able to help with the infection? Well, because this naive T cell has the blue receptor and it's not suitable for what we are uh, currently having an uh, infection from. Um, so they are, this one is not going to help. Okay. Uh, and then it's going to show it to the next one. And because it has the same receptor, this will be, this will be the chosen one. Okay. So the process of um, showing the bacterial antigens to these naive T cells, this is called antigen, antigen presentation, antigen presentation. So not every macrophage uh, can do antigen presentation. Uh, uh, macrophage can, okay? Neutrophils cannot, for example. So um, when a cell is able to do antigen presentation, we call them an APC, antigen presenting cell. So a macrophage is an example of an antigen presenting cell, APC. Okay. So uh, back to here, the macrophage, the a acting as an APC, uh, it would um, uh, show the antigens to all these naive T cells. And then uh, after locating the correct naive T cell, uh, it's going to activate the naive T cell. So when you become the chosen one, you are going to undergo a clonal expansion clonal expansion okay so clonal expansion basically just means a lot of mitosis okay so this chosen t cell is going to clone itself and you are going to have a lot of them so all of these uh, cells will be identical they all came from um, cell division mitosis of this one and they will all have the same receptor and in this case we are looking for the red receptor um, that would help deal with the uh, red bacterial infection okay so this here uh, they are uh, a clone uh, a bunch of clones of the chosen naive T cell so um, as um, after you uh, clone yourself after the naive T cell clone, clone themselves um, they could become, they could differentiate, they could transform into uh, one of four things, okay? So now, first of all, um, they could become what we call uh, a, a killer T cell, okay? Killer T cell, not to be confused with the natural killer cell, okay? So this is different. This is killer T cell. So killer T cell, uh, which is also known as um, cytotoxic, cytotoxic. Uh, T cells. Okay, so uh, they are going to transform. So there, I'm going to draw another um, cell here, and they're killer T cells. 
Uh, I'm gonna give this T cells a, a, a little little weapon here, okay? And so the uh, cytotoxic T cells here, their job is to is to destroy destroy infected cells, destroy infected cells, okay? And they could do that by uh, uh, secreting secreting something called uh, porphyrin. Porphyrin. Okay, so porphyrin uh, is a molecule that will insert holes in the membranes of the target cells. Okay, so uh, don't confuse this with the MAC that we were talking about uh, in the complement earlier. Okay, these are separate types of uh, chemicals and they would uh, uh, insert holes into the, um, the infected cell. So if a cell is infected with a virus, for example, uh, then the killer T cells is going to identify them and put holes uh, in them. Okay, so that is a uh, killer T cell, uh, and it's a one-way transformation. Once the naive T cell becomes killer T cells, it will stay that way until uh, it finishes its job. Uh, another another um, a choice that it has is it can become what's called a memory memory uh, T cell. Okay, so a memory T cell. So um, the memory T cell, uh, I'm gonna give it a, a memory bubble. Okay, it remembers. Okay, so the memory T cells. Uh, will remain in the body, remain in the body for a very long time, okay, for a very long time. Theoretically, uh, 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 it can remain there for for a lifetime, okay, but sometimes, you know, they do go away and then you might lose the immunity a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, they remain in the body for a very long time and is going to be able to uh, 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 um, create create a rapid uh, response if you are infected by the same pathogen. Okay, so next time, if you get infected by this red pathogen again, um, then you don't have to go through this whole selecting process, okay? You recognize it. You can skip directly to uh, to differentiating into the killer T cells uh, and to help deal with it, okay? Um, and then there is another one, uh, another one uh, called the uh, suppressor T cell. Suppressor. Suppressor T cell. And the function of the suppressor T cell uh, is basically to stop the immune response when this is all over. So I'm gonna give this guy a, a stop sign. Stop. Okay. So this will stop immune response. Uh, you don't want to keep on having mitosis when there is nothing to fight, right? Uh, uncontrolled cell division is quite dangerous things. It can lead to cancer, right? So stop immune response when the infection is cleared. Okay, uh, and then uh, there is an other type of cells that you can become. Um, the naive T cells can become, and it is called a helper T cell. Helper T cell. Okay, so uh, helper T cell. I'm gonna give it a, a helping hand. Okay. This is a hand. There we go. Uh, and what does helper T cells do? All right, so we're going to get to that in a second. Uh, but let's go back to our bone marrow here for a second. Um, the bone marrow is going to also create a second group of cells called the naive B cells. So similarly to the naive T cells, these are B cells that have not been uh, activated. They have not been uh, exposed to uh, foreign antigens. And, you know, similar to... Uh, naive T cells, uh, each of the B cells created are going to be to be different. Okay, so we might have a have a B cells that have the ability to create uh, green antibodies. We're gonna have one that can create orange antibodies, and we're gonna have one that could create uh, blue antibodies, maybe, and we're gonna have one that can create red antibodies. Right. So, of course, it's possible that you might not have the right naive cells 
uh, for the infections that you're experiencing. Uh, and in those cases, you're just going to take longer to recover from the illness, right? You're going to have to wait um, for the body to eventually uh, create that particular uh, um, naive cells uh, by chance. Uh, and so what happens is um, the helper T cell, the helper T cell is going to uh, 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 activate these naive B cells, okay? It's going to help activate activate the correct the correct naive B cell. Okay, so uh, it's gonna check with this one. Do you have the right receptor to de the the right antibodies to deal with the infection? And green is not the one we're looking for. And and you know orange is not the one we're looking for. Blue is not the one we're looking for. And so. Uh, it will find the right one, and when it does, uh, this would be the chosen one. Okay, and you know, just like before, when you are the chosen cell, uh, then you are going to undergo clonal expansion. Clonal expansion. Okay, and that basically means you're gonna make uh, a lot of copies of yourself. Okay, uh, through mitosis. Okay, so they are supposed to be the same and they will all have the ability to make antibodies okay antibodies there we go um, then what happens is um, just like before these um, clones they would have different choices um, they could differentiate they could transform into different uh, different uh, uh, cells so over here they could transform into what's called uh, memory b cells memory memory B cells and uh, it's the same function as before right they are going to stay in the body for a long time uh, uh, and you know next time you get infected by the same thing you can uh, 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 bypass all the uh, steps from before and skip straight to this mass production and you are going to create something called plasma cell okay plasma cell okay so a plasma cell uh, is basically uh, uh, antibody factory okay so here here is the plasma cell and it's going to mass produce antibodies right so you have all these antibodies coming up okay? and these antibodies are going to be tailored to the infection that we have and in this case it would be uh, tailored to attack these red bacteria. okay so um, how would the antibody help well it's the things that we talked about right they could neutralize the toxin if the bacteria is producing toxins um, they could form these membrane uh, sorry these um, uh, um, immune complexes right and cause things to clump together right they could encourage the formation of uh, uh, membrane attack complexes uh, which would then um, uh, cause holes to form on the on the bacteria right so by creating these antibodies we are going to be able to fight off the infection so this whole process takes about like a week or two right uh, and uh, um, you know sometimes that's how long it takes before you feel a little bit better so a couple other things that uh, I want to um, uh, uh, um, add to the diagram. So these cells, um, the, um, the cells that the naive cells can become, the killer T cells, memory T cells, suppressor T cells, and helper T cells, they are called effector cells. So there are four different types of effectors for, uh, for naive T cells, and there are two types of effectors for naive B cells. So let me just quickly summarize it for you uh, uh, down here. Um, we have, again, we have the naive T cell. Naive T cell. And in order to activate the naive T cell, we would need to have an APC, okay, an antigen presenting cell. Right? Um, so in this case, we talked about macrophage. There are other APCs in the body, but you know we're just going to keep it simple. So once you, you have been activated, once you have been chosen uh, by an APC, then they could become you know the killer T cell, killer T cell. They could become the helper T cell. They could become the memory uh, T cell or they could become a suppressor, suppressor T cell, okay? Uh, all these cells, all these cells are called effectors, effectors, okay? So if I ask you what are the effectors of naive T cells, they, they are it, okay? So um, the immunity that you have, the immune response that you have um, from the T cells, we call this, we call this cell-mediated, cell-mediated, immunity okay uh, on the other hand on the other hand we have we have a 
naive naive B cell okay and to uh, activate the naive B cell to choose the correct naive B cell you will need to have a helper T cell helper T cell yeah so once you uh, once the naive B cells are chosen by the uh, is chosen by the helper T cell it will differentiate into into memory B cell memory B cell and um, uh, plasma 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 cell okay plasma cell so these are antibody factories right so again these are called effector cells these are the effectors for naive B cells okay uh, and immunity that you have from uh, from B cells we call this um, we call this antibody antibody mediated antibody medi mediated immunity okay uh, or sometimes in uh, in textbooks they call this humoral humoral uh, immunity okay so it's just two branches of uh, adaptive immunity cell mediated and antibody mediated so um, this could happen uh, anytime you encounter a foreign antigen okay you might remember uh, 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 RH sensitization right so suppose this is not bacteria if this is if this is just like a red cell uh, red cell with RH on it then you would go through the same process and in the end you would the the the, the end result would be um, you now have anti RH antibodies right uh, and so you are sensitized you create a memory cells uh, memory B cells and memory T cells against the RH factor so that's why the second time you get transfused with positive blood um, you are going to react against it right you already have these antibodies you're gonna have a cross reaction Okay, so that's basically uh, how antibodies are produced, uh, and um, uh, it's a quite a, a long process, uh, but hopefully you understand it uh, from the uh, from the video.